Welcome back to the Big Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Avis, and sitting with me on the couch to my left is my co-host, the Prince of Pixels, Nick Wright. And today we're going to be doing part two of 15 of our favorite game shows. All right, here we are with part two of uh, 15 of our favorite uh, game shows. Uh, sorry, you guys, to cut you off in the middle of the episode. I hate to do that, but, you know, it part one went kind of long because we're getting so much good information. Uh, yeah, uh, not only, like, just the good information, but we are doing a longer list, you know. So instead yeah. of, like, 10 things, it's 15 things. True. And, and we had some good times with the uh, the pyramid one. So, you know, if, if they haven't seen uh, part one, they ought to go check that and, and we, watch it, us play. By the way, I'll put a link to the part one of our um, two-part in the description down below. So make sure you check that out. Um, otherwise, you, you'll, you'll be missing out on the first part of the list. Yeah, that pyramid was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And if I, I totally intend on having multiple versions of this show. Like I would be totally cool doing like a part two or even a part three if we can find 15 or 30 more shows. Well, I don't think that'll be a problem. I don't think so either. And if there's some way that we could somehow incorporate like – you know that uh, one of the shows in you know, like we couldn't do like a uh, you know too many shows, but Pyramid was perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and but before I get too far into this, um, our little intro, I wanted to go ahead and welcome back our uh, guest from the previous episode. Uh, you guys know him best as GB Blackrock from uh, GB Blackrock or GB is it Blackrock's Toy Box, Mark? Blackrock's Toy Box. That's Blackrock's right. the the excellent blog, Blackrock's Toy Box. Uh, welcoming back again, Mark uh, Mark Baker Wright. Hello. Thanks for coming back. Yep. Uh, like we said in the last episode, I mean, we can't do a TV game show podcast episode or, a, you know, an episode of The Big Geek without having Mark. Oh, yeah. He is yes. he is the man. He literally has the, the book written on game shows. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Once again. The magic book. The magic book. Um, so without further ado, we'll just jump back into the uh, list. Uh, I think we are starting with our eighth show on the 15th. And it was your turn, I believe. Oh, eighth game show. I the eighth like, game show, I yeah. <laughs> I think we did one through seven in the last episode. So That's yeah. right. Right, okay, yeah. And, and so, yeah, so this, this is my third on my list. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and kind of going, like it, it, we talked about a lot in the first episode, that a lot of mine, it's like there, there would be one standout thing that, you know, I liked about the show, but I didn't really know how to play the show so much. Mm -hmm. And that still holds true for this one. <laughs> uh, but uh, Starcade. This is Starcade, TV's first video arcade game show, starring your favorite video games and some brand new ones being introduced to the public for the first time anywhere. And now, here's your host for Starcade, Jeff Edwards. Okay, thank you very much. Which. I mean, there's obvious reasons. What would why be the would one love, thing that stands yeah, out to you? Yeah. <laughs> so there's obvious reasons why I would love Starcade, but like for the life of me, I can't really remember like even how the game was played. It just, you know, it just centered around arcade games, and therefore yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't remember. Like I just remember like you you were timed. Like you could get up there to play a game for like a, a certain period of time but i don't remember like there were questions or something like how it was you got up there to play games which might, right i think mark but here's how answer that each episode features five video arcade game cabinets usually they're different ones sometimes they would do a special episode where they'd have it just be dragon's lair for example oh you know, i've seen that one yeah I, well i remember seeing it it's not fresh in my mind but i remember that one very well <laughs> Well, I guess I don't remember it very well. <laughs> I remember watching it, but nothing else about the show. <laughs> so there are two contestants, sometimes two teams of two people each. And the host would ask a question about video games, usually. So, for example, uh, can Frogger move in any direction or only forward? Oh. Uh, it's usually two parts can like move that. move in any direction. And yeah. Well, uh, th I guess that depends on if we're talking about up, down, left, right, or if we're talking about angles, because you can't really... Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> you could get nitpicky with only that. Only forward, or it becomes obvious then. Right. Okay. First person to buzz in, get it right, uh, they will then have a chance to choose which of the five games that are there they want to play. If they get it wrong, the opponent gets to choose. 
Okay. Of the five games, one has been chosen in advance as the mystery game. Oh, so if you choose game. that at any point during the game, you win some kind of a special prize oh. just for choosing that game. And all the prizes on Starcade tended to be electronics oriented or game oriented. Hang on, Mark, let me ask you a question. When you say Go Mystery Arcade, was it shrouded or was it like a daily double? Like you just didn't know which one, one was of the five choices okay. has been pre selected okay. so that if anyone selects that game, they get a prize. It's gotcha. like the Mystery Square on Hollywood Square. Okay, okay, okay. And you better that example. game is like whoop 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, I was just because in my mind too, like I I had like a game back in the shadows, like we don't even know what it is, but okay, okay. Heavy drops. Yes, the mystery game. game. Okay, Mark, I'm sorry. Please continue. No worries. So once a game is selected, they play that for 50 seconds, only 50 seconds. So don't play it like you're trying to do a real long game. Play it like you want to get the most points you can very very quickly. Because whatever your score is on the game at the end of 50 seconds, that's your score for Starcade. I wonder what. And at the end of two games, whoever is in the lead will play a special game that's called uh, Name That Game or something. Uh, Sorry, this is where I name the game. Had to look at my sources, and they're going to do basically four video monitors, and they'll show you a clip from a video game, and you have to answer: Is it this game or that game? Oh, that sounds fun. Now, if Nick, you get all right, you win another prize. Nick raised a good question. I wonder why they had chose 50 seconds as the Instead time. of a minute. Yeah, you know, just kind It's of a weird. fair question. I don't have an exact answer. I'm sure on some level it's dictated by trying to cram it all into a 30-minute show. Oh, good point. You Beyond save these that, 10 seconds here and there. Yeah, <laughs> 10 seconds yeah. for sponsors, you know. After Name the Game, the two contestants then play one more game after a toss-up question. That one's only for 40 seconds. Whoever has the lead at the end of those three games then goes to the bonus round. They have to play one of the two remaining games. And before they choose which of the two they want, the host will say, we had 20 people play this game. The average of their score for that game is this number. Mm -hmm. Contestant chooses which of the two games they want to play. If they can beat that average, they win a video arcade cabinet of their own. Oh my god! (laughs) It's Silver Spoon scenario all over again. That's awesome. So it it could literally be any arcade cabinet, or was it just one of the arcade... Well, no, they they pre-select it, and it's on display front and center at the Okay. Uh, Okay. This is the cabinet you could possibly win. I don't care what game they give you, though. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, that... that, 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 In a while. You can go online to Starcade.tv, and they still have a selection of full episodes you can watch. Thank you. Thank you, Internet, so much. I need to do that. I do, too, honestly. Because, uh, like I said, I, I vaguely remember that Star, uh, the Dragon's Lair episode. And in that episode, it was weird because, you know, they, they would only get a set amount of time. I guess it was the 50 seconds, which isn't much. Well, what? What round it is, yes. Yeah, well, it, but that's not a lot of time to get into Dragon's Lair. Play. Because you have animations oh, yeah. and kicking, you gotta and like, just sit there and wait through everything. You All barely have an scenes. opportunity to score points, the and I wonder how they cut scene. Yeah, and like, it's does Dragon Slayer have a points system? I don't even it think does. Does yeah. it? Okay, okay. Um, so that I'll, I have to go back and find that one since those are available online. Um, now most games do have intro sequences and such, mm-hmm. and that they make it very clear as you watch that those are not taken out of your time. Oh, okay, but, okay. They don't start counting. Oh, so it. like while Pac Man's playing, it's a little music. It's only when you start moving that it starts to count down. But interstitials probably do take away from the time. Hmm. So something that just sits there and eats up time in the middle of playing, if you get to it fast enough, so to speak, gotcha. that probably counts against you. So watch that. Mm-hmm. They probably would not get to the Pac-Man interstitial, I wouldn't think, in that amount of time. I don't anyway. think that yeah. ever happened, but I am thinking what you're talking about for Dragon Slayer, mm-hmm. where you've got a scene that 
he runs through the next door after you've done whatever. If you die, man, that takes up so much time. Yeah. <laughs> and also, too, like, for you younger, you know, listeners, viewers, um, you millennials and younger, you know, it, it was all about points back in the day. There, You know, now now everybody beats a game to get to an end game to, to roll the credits yeah, like totally. a movie, you know? Like, and you want to just beat the game. If they do do points anymore, I'm noticing it's all social media stuff, and it's all... You know, mm. beat the leaderboards, okay. which I, I mean, you, you know, I mean, that's ex- what it was before, but it was all kind of localized or to collect trophies, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Like there are, uh, but even then, the that if there is a point related trophy, I, it's usually like a like a, a first person shooter where it's frags or kills. Like yeah. that's that count as a point. So f- you know, fifty thousand, you get a silver trophy. Because well, when I was at the movies yesterday. Uh, I know they're trying to get you to download this app. Um, I forget what it was called, but it, it would do kind of like this augmented reality thing. So they're trying to get everybody to hold up their phones in front of the screen and it'll have like this little kind of, you know, Space Invaders or something kind of simple game. But they're trying to get you to compete with everybody else that's in the theater doing this also. That it'll, oh, wow. And it's using augmented reality to do this? Yeah. That's a yeah, really so, neat like, concept. It, it'll, the funny thing is, it's like if you're not playing it, you got nothing to look at. Yeah. It's just like, you're just like looking at this screen with like, you know, space or something. And it's playing like this just little music and there's a little <laughs> countdown in the corner. And you're uh-huh. just like, you, <laughs> not, Gee, I wish at least I could otherwise play this. you're looking at trivia or something. You know? Well, yeah, because I mean, you yeah, know, I, yeah. I'm not sure all Samsung phones have like that. But, like, the whole point of that was to, like, now compare your score with your friends. True. Kind of thing. So, yeah. so that was going for points. So scores can still be relevant yeah. in, in today's games. Uh, and, and I guess, to be fair, too, a lot of these, like, little quick mobile games, too, like, focus on score. So they're still out there. Yeah. I'm sorry to talk down to you younger viewers. <laughs> it, it it has taken kind of a backseat, I think. It used to just, all, it's all about the score. Yeah, it was all about the score. You you know, and you um, you knew how many points you were going to get by eating the fourth ghost in Pac-Man. You know, like, that's <laughs> that's the kind of thing that happens so often. You just, it's buried, it's burned in your brain. Yeah. So uh, what, what, um... So the questions you mentioned there was the one about Frogger. Do you remember, were there any other like um, ones that you can remember? Oh, there nothing that was very very complicated. If you knew the games, you would know the answers pretty quickly. Uh, one I remember that was more during a credits uh, commercial sequence, which I assume would have been the same format. Where are the characters in the game Dig Dug? And the answer is underground. So, <laughs> oh, nothing, where I thought he was asking. I was thinking, in what like X and Y? I mean, do they need to know that? <laughs> well, again, they always give you two choices, and it's one or the other. But oh, okay, know. okay. I'm around. I, I, I was sitting there thinking of like their names, like Puka and Frygar. Oh yeah, Puka. Where, where are they underground? Oh, okay. The now, whole game's yeah, underground. Very, very basic stuff. Really. So this, um, this is a strange um, show in my mind because. It's during the heyday of TV game shows, but it's also the heyday of arcades. So you have this culture clash, you know, viewers who are watching these shows and a host who's not a young person who's hosting the no, show. Right. You know, it, it must have been a really, it had to be very thrilling for viewers. And I, I, it was, I was a viewer of that show to kind of see like your hobby, your thing be represented and uh, I'm assuming it was like a prime time show. I guess maybe it was aired it was in syndicated. syndicated. It was syndicated. So we often saw it in the middle of the day or the afternoon. Okay. But it could be on whatever time the local station wanted to air it. Did it air um, during like Saturday morning cartoons? Is that around the time it would air I too? that way, but it could have done. Mm. I mean, again, it was syndicated. I mean, actually, I take that back. The first season, it was on WTBS, uh, the Atlanta station oh. that was carried by a lot of cable. Okay, yeah. TBS Superstation, they've been around forever. That right. was one of the f- first like cable channels, yeah. And that year, it was hosted by a guy named Mark Richards, who I've never heard of before or since. <laughs> then the next year, Things it was in syndication. <laughs> and that was by Jeff Edwards. And Jeff Edwards has hosted a whole bunch of shows. Yeah. Is, in my opinion, a kind of awkward game show host. He's very chatty familiar but he doesn't in my opinion relate real well to the kids he's this really <laughs> awkward guy 
cracks a lot of corny jokes. I remember uh, that feeling, Mark. I know what you mean. So uh, you guys like to play the Pac-Man? <laughs> <laughs> the, the weird thing about that is I think he actually knew about the games. Uh, in the episode I watched, he's given the kids hints that they completely ignore most of the time, but... <laughs> the, 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 you the, old the, man, the, shut up, Dad. <laughs> that's legitimate advice. Yeah. <laughs> so, He's got uncle I jokes. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I don't have any outside knowledge of Jeff Edwards and games, but it's again, just such the a... stuff he actually told people to try to do. Yeah, made sense. Right. It, it's just such a weird thing because now nowadays this type of show would be hosted or it would would air on like a contemporary like channel for like the age group, you know, like there's channels just for the age group of that, what it would belong on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, there would be some young kid host in the show, not a kid, but like some teenager with big hair. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the kids are doing, these skateboards out. I'm so out of touch. <laughs> he's playing on tw- He's like tweeting as he's doing the show. Uh, I'm 41. <laughs> But you know what I mean. Like it's it's the only show that I can think of that has that feel. Like it's it it's like the old school meets the new school, and it it it's it was exciting. Yeah, no, as kids shows, quote unquote, go. Starcade is rather different than the others. Yeah, it's a good choice. Um, do we have any other thoughts on Starcade? No, uh, just that that I need to watch it. That I need to go to that website and watch Starcade. it. That's it. Yeah, what 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 was that again, Mark? Starcade.tv. All right, I'm gonna to try to remember to put that down in the note, the description show, so like people can click on a link and go to that. Um, that because that, that that's just in a there. Are a lot of these old shows are just gone forever, but this it's preserved and on a link you can just go to for free. Yeah, now it's not the entire library, not all the episodes they made, but it's a good selection. Uh, mm-hmm. They do seem to be all Jeff Edwards ones, from what I can tell. I don't see any of the Mark Richards episodes there. Okay. Uh, fun fact, actually, they did a couple of pilots for this show, which I've never seen, but one of those pilots was hosted by Alex Trebek. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I know he, he insists on all of the kids answering in the phrase of question. <laughs> uh, actually, no, he had started doing Jeopardy by this time, just. Okay. Uh, well, actually, maybe not when the pilot was done. I don't know, but certainly by the time the show was on. Well, he dodged a bullet. We'll just say that because I mean he's certainly gone on to some pretty, you know, Jeopardy is Jeopardy. So, <laughs> still going strong. Yep. Okay. Uh, that well, that leads me up to my number three, um, and uh, it it is a uh, another kids show. I guess you would qualify it as on Nickelodeon, and I'm I'm of course talking about Double Dare. On your mark. Get set. Go. These two teams are in the dark trying to catch ping pong balls by clashing their symbols. Whoever catches the ball first will symbolize silliness with 20 bucks and control of the show that never clashes with good taste. Yes, it's Double Dare. Oh, it just took us away. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, it. I wasn't exactly sure if it qualifies as a game show. Oh, I, I questioned that. Absolutely. You know, there, there are contestants and prizes, but... Uh, and then, you know, like I said something to Mark, and Mark's like, absolutely qualifies. It, you know, it is a game show. And, but uh, in every sense I can think of. But it's so for kids. I mean, and that's just yeah. Nickelodeon. It's a network for kids. Uh, you know, like, you, you could have told me that there were kids with headsets in the back, and I might have bought it back then. <laughs> but hosted by, the, you know, Mark Summers, uh, a, just one of the all-time great, you know, game show hosts in my mind. Uh, mm-hmm. Who now has like a, this second career on like food shows? Right? I don't. Yeah. I've never watched him, but he he has a, oh, like yeah. a new career. Like he's still around. I remember the first time I saw him on Food Network. It's like, what are you doing on the Food Network? <laughs> Where's all the slime and the? <laughs> and he he's almost like he almost is debil- debilitated by his OCD too, which is the most ironic thing. Oh, for a show like Double Dare to realize that that's true about the host is amazing. Yeah, and he, but he, he really seemed to have fun with that show. I really enjoyed he did. it. Absolutely did. He could be a bit corny at times, which drove my brother crazy. He, <laughs> he was not the biggest Mark Summers fan, and you know he had um it, it wasn't syndication during its run at a point. It, it, sometime, yes. Yeah, so it would come on on Saturdays on Fox at the exact same time as like Star Trek: The Next Generation on another channel. So he was oh. always fighting me for like super like and he was bigger and older so 
So like, his choices. Yeah, and I, I watched most of I I wouldn't say that I hated Star Trek The Next Generation, but I always kind of held a, but a it grudge. it was keeping you from Double Dare. It was keeping me from Double Dare. <laughs> I, I got nothing against Star Trek The Next Generation. I think it's a great show. But, you know, he... he And here's the thing. Here was his justification, and I can't blame him because it was... Uh, in my mind, I'm remembering now. They had a kind of a themed episode where it was all about Elvis. And okay. Mark Summers likes to indulge in his Elvis impersonations. Viva, viva Las Vegas. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. He would kind of slip in and out of them at a time, like when he would read a clue. But in this episode, he got to dress like the king. He got to sing and dance in certain parts. I went and looked this up on YouTube. It is cringeworthy. <laughs> I can totally buy where like a grown man would look at this and go, nope. All kinds of nope. I'm not watching this. But you know, he, I was a kid. I was like young. And, you know, it's certainly appealing to anyone of that age. And uh, if you're not familiar with Double Dare, get yeah. ready, first of all. It's coming back. Nickelodeon had just announced that they've ordered 40 new episodes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it will be back. And uh, there's a whole new generation who are going to get to enjoy Double Dare, which excites me because I have a seven-year-old right up his wheelhouse. I mean, he's going to love it. Cool. Um, but, yeah, it, it was uh, it is core a game show. There were two teams. Uh, there were two teams, uh, two t people per team, a red team and a blue team always. Always. And, yeah. So, you know. The host, Mark Summers, would ask a trivia question. You had the opportunity to answer it for points or dare pass it to the other team where they could answer it and get like double the points or they could double dare you back. And if you could answer it for even more points or you could accept a physical challenge, like you had to do one or the other. You couldn't just pass right. like you had to do one or the other. And of course, all the kids are looking forward to the physical challenges. Uh, now, there were people who played it very strategically. Where they, if they thought that the answer was hard enough, they would dare on purpose to get the double dare back. And uh, there were teams that would, you know, not really even do the physical challenges. They would just score points. Um, but anyways, if there was a physical challenge, then, you know, like the, the they would be a stage and uh, it, it involved lots of things like. You know, they. I remember they would have these helmets with like cylinders, and you know, like one person had to stand on one side of the stage and shoot a water gun, and you had to fill up the cylinder. Yeah, right. You know, or yeah, I remember there was this one challenge where you had to take a ping pong ball, and the other this Elvis episode, they had brought a guitar. Out. Mark Summers was like, Whoa, ho, ho, and he did his little thing, and they got guitars, and they had to hold it up and get the bounce the ball from across the stage into the you know guitar, and you had to do just like three and thirty seconds or whatever the countdown was. Um, those were fun, but they usually were, you would just get soaked. Like it didn't typically oh, always involve. You have to. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so at the end of the game, whoever had the most points, you got to compete in this obstacle course, which was what Nickelodeon was famous for. That's where you got the, the slime yeah. and the chocolate syrup mm -hmm. and, you know, just whipped cream. Whipped cream. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was fantastic. Diva! And there was eight. There were eight little challenges, and it was in a relay. And you know, one one teammate would start out on a hamster wheel. It always started out on that hamster wheel every time. Flag would come down. They would pass it off, and then so on and so forth. But I, I remember some of the classic obstacles, like the big thing of pancakes, or like just a tub of slop. There was always this big container filled with balloons that they would have to jump in and like pass the flag over. But it would always end on this slide that just you would just plow straight through. Just I don't even know what that stuff was made of. Yeah, it, it looked like oatmeal, like colored. Could you play in? Yeah, it, I, I'll have to look up and see what that stuff's actually made of. I'm sure it's out there, like a recipe to make it. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it was just a lot of fun, and it was a staple on Nickelodeon for years. Ran as um, either Double Dare or Super Sloppy Double Dare, I think is what it was called. For time. Yeah, from '87 to '89. Uh, they Fox had there for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fox picked it up, and it picked up the um, family double dare, which was really fun too. That's where you had an opportunity to play with like your parents, mm -hmm. you know. So there, there's this, it's just really hilarious to see these parents willingly go through these obstacles. Mm, yeah. it, it's just fantastic. It, it kind of adds this like you know, uh, 
funniest home videos element to it. <laughs> Seeing like a grown man like trying to get down on a bicycle and ride across a sheet of ice. Mm -hmm. You know, like that that parent loves that kid, I'm telling you. <laughs> but that went for a while. Um, it went, you know, it, it went away around 93, I want to say. That's right. I believe that was the end of Mark Summers' involvement. They, it came back, reincarnated for like a year as Double Dare 2000, I believe. That's correct. Now, Mark Summers wasn't a host of that, but mm -hmm. he was an executive consultant, so he was still involved. Okay, well, that's cool. Uh, but it only lasted a year, and I, I never even saw that one. Um, and then it's been, you know, gone for a while. Now, actually, I did read that in at, um, Universal Studios, I think, maybe even to this day, they had Double Dare in, uh, as part of, like, the hotel lobby. Like, they would have a live... Oh, yes. You know um, what I'm talking about, Mark? I, I, I do. I'd seen that somewhere. Uh, yeah, for the guests. The hotel guests could participate. They, they, would, they would tape but it, like I guess. like a stage show. Yeah, like a stage show, and you could participate if you were a guest. And they've, they've done that for years, actually, from what I understand. Mm. So it's still in spirit alive down there. They're still doing it. But they, um, the show was kind of small scale. It was, it was actually taped in Philadelphia, where it started. And then uh, it, uh, they built this like huge Nickelodeon uh, studio where they filmed most of their shows in Orlando. And uh, th that just not that long ago closed down. And I think they moved to California for most of their filming. Uh, but I always, always wanted to go to one of those tapings. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they had all the game shows that they did, many, many game shows. But they also had, like, you know, live action shows, like SNL-style skit shows but starring kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nickelodeon was just a really, really fun channel. And I, it, it would be neat to do an episode maybe someday. Just the like 80s Nick, 90s Nick. I mean, uh, I know, like, we everybody likes Nickelodeon. Oh yeah, I do have like a couple of interesting little notes. Uh, Dana Carvey was actually nearly the host of that show. Really? Yep he was he was considered down to the wire and he he backed out when he got an audition for Saturday Night Live and obviously that worked out well, for him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I would have loved to have seen Dana Carvey as the host of uh, Double Dare. He would have been yeah. excellent at it. Yeah. He's great. Uh, another thing too that I felt that was. Interesting, but makes kind of sense, is that Mark Summers was actually older than he looked yeah. on, on the show. When it began in 87, he was 34 years old. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, he, he was encouraged not to let on his age. Like, I, I guess if he were being, you know, he, he just wasn't supposed to. Like, nowadays it would be hard because of social media. Probably not as difficult then. I don't know how many people would come out and go like, so Double Dare is this great new show you're doing, and the kids, like, how old are you exactly? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but it, it could have been taboo, maybe, at the, an older guy, an older gentleman hosting a kid's TV show on a network for kids. But, I mean, you got to have adults run the thing. I mean, seriously. Do you have any memories of uh, Double Dare? Slime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Double Dare, I was right in that era where Nickelodeon was doing slime on everything. Yeah, Nickelodeon was all about the slime in that era. Oh, yeah, you, you can't do that on television where it actually, that's, I think, where that started. I think so, yeah. yeah it, and, it, it was. Yeah. Without, and that show actually ran for a well long time, too. When you can't do that in television, went off the air. They would just dump you with a bucket of slime. <laughs> Interestingly, I don't know if they called it slime on Nickelodeon. They Remember how Nickelodeon had the GAC? Um, Oh, well, that's a well, different substance, yeah. actually. It's a different substance. I think they did. I think they called it slime. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. When I, I was watching an episode just to remember the, you know, some of the finer points of the show, and uh, Mark it, Summers it, referred to some of the else. stuff as Gak. was something else that Nickelodeon did. Yeah. It was totally, it was like more styro, like not styrofoamy, but it, well, it, it, it did it have had, a different it, substance. It had chunks in it, but, and I'm thinking more of like, you can't do that on television, that they, they would talk about being slimed. Because no, when I think of slime, you think Ghostbusters, and I'm, everything was slime in the 80s. I'm wondering if we just sort of kind of made slime Nickelodeon. or if they... No, absolutely. That was Nickelodeon themselves. Okay, okay. Cool. All right, well, thanks for straightening that out for me in my head. <laughs> I don't have anything else for Double Dare. I, I do want to revisit Nickelodeon again in the future and talk about some of the other great game shows in future game show episodes we may do. Because they do have some other really good ones that I, yeah. I considered mentioning but settled on Double Dare. Because I, I just couldn't do an episode and not talk about Double Dare. Totally fits. So I'm going to pass the ball to you, Mark, and uh, that you are up to number four, I believe, sir. Yes, I am. Uh, my number four is a show that uh, was gone for a long while, uh, The Joker's Wild. From 
television city in Hollywood. Here's the game where knowledge is king and lady luck is queen. It's the Joker's Wild. Now here's the host of our show, Jack Berry. Thank you very much. You're very kind. It was really, really big in the 1970s. Oh, wait, 70s. you're not talking about the Snoop Dogg version? <laughs> well, that thing was gone for a while, and it came back. And I don't have a lot of experience with the Snoop Dogg version. Nothing against Snoop Dogg per se. I don't get cable. I've never gotten cable in my adult life. Uh, so I've not seen a full episode of his version. I From what I can that. tell <laughs> online... It seems remarkably faithful if decidedly hip hopped up. And, well, the, you know, they still have the little thingy pool, like of, I believe. But uh, given I'm sorry the, to derail you, Mark. <laughs> let me go back to the history. Yes, please. Uh, premiered in 1972, and you'll remember when I was talking about Tic Tac Doe that I said that Jack Berry and Dan Enright had been front and center of the game show scandals, and so they were very much in exile for. Over a decade, The Joker's Wild was Jack Berry's return to television. He actually hosted the show after having been pretty much absent from screens for a long time. Everybody loves a good comeback. So, yeah, it was very successful. The basic format of the show is you're centered around a slot machine uh, with three windows that each window has different categories for questions that you might be asked or jokers. So contestant spins a wheel. And if a category shows up in only one window, it's worth $50 mm-hmm. if you get it right. If it shows up in two windows, it's worth $100. Double that. If it shows up in all three windows, it's worth $200. $500 wins the game. But if a joker shows up in a window, you can make that joker whatever category you want it to. So you can match it and make a category worth more. Or you can do what's called going off the board and pick one of the categories that is part of this round there's five categories each round but isn't one of the ones showing on the windows you think you may know something more about people and places than you do about math for Mm -hmm. example oh yeah so i remember when they would spin i just he where he would do the like he got so excited when that first joker would hit you know he'd be like joker joker ramps that up oh yeah because if you got three jokers in a single spin... You win, right? That's an automatic win. Yeah. Mm. Well, I should say it's a, you have to answer the question. Oh, right. But if you answer it right, it's an automatic win. Right. But he, he was great at that. He was really good at pumping that up. So what, what happens if you win, Mark? If you get $500, and, and that's after an equal number of spins of each player. So if the first player gets to 500 the his opponent has a chance to catch up. Oh, that's right. But you don't control a board, right? You alternate. It, you alternated questions yeah. on this. First one to five hundred, though, wins the game and gets to play the bonus round, which is in this in the nineteen seventies version called Face the Devil. Oh yeah, I remember that. And couldn't see a devil. What right? Face the Devil like was is the that. three windows were only dollar amounts, or the devil. Don and Rick, and they, they want you to go? They said go. They said to go. You want to go? go? She's going. She's going. Here she goes. You have 75. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The devil did it to you, and so all the money goes back on the pile. <laughs> and the idea is you're trying to get to $1,000 in score added up between the dollar amounts showing up in the windows. And if you do that, before you see the devil appear... You win that money plus a cash prize, or not a cash prize, but a, a prize package, excuse me, worth about three to $4,000. You also would win if you happen to get what's called a natural triple. So say 25 showed up in all three windows. You don't win $75, you win the thousand and the prize. Was, was it Tic-Tac-Doe or Joker's Wild where the host had the stack of money and would actually put the cash in your hand. I love that. That both. was a that was, it was both. That was okay. A picture of Barry Enright shows in general, not okay. necessarily all of them, but they liked. Do you remember that. that, Nick? He just had yeah. like a big old yeah, fat was, stack of hundred dollar bills. Was, yes, and the crowd would kind of like yeah. count along. It was a big part yeah, of the show. Like, when he first said "Joker's Wild," I, I was kind of like, I obviously I remember the name, but I yeah. cannot remember like really what the show was like. We're knowledge is king and, and Lady and Luck as, is queen. Yeah. <laughs> 
and, and uh, as you were like describing, you know, you pull the lever and stuff. I'm yeah. remembering. This oh stuff. yeah, the lever. And, and I almost like stopped and like tried to ask like if the Joker looked like a devil or something because for some reason Joker's wild. I was thinking like there's a devil. Yeah. And then you said something about the devil around. And I'm well, like, we had yeah, the we really. had the dragon in the other show, so you're like what? right. What what like nefarious character are they going to use I for knew, the Joker? I knew for some reason I was thinking of a, a devil when you, he brought up Joker's wild. But yeah, yeah, I'm but sorry, Mark. I keep was. cutting in, but I just have these thoughts in my head, and I know you're going to know the answer. <laughs> 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 so, okay, so, uh, so yeah, I please. It started on CBS, mm-hmm. but it was mostly syndicated. But when it premiered on CBS, going back to your previous game, Mark Summers was a page. At the CBS studios, oh. worked kind of behind the scenes on a number of shows, including The Joker's Wild. His first on air credit was he filled in as the announcer for an episode or so of The Joker's Wild. Yeah. Wow, That's nice. Cool. That's cool. You, we haven't really mentioned the announcers, I don't think, in previous shows. Like, they were a big deal. Like, you know, like. like and there were names that showed up quite a lot. That yeah. I think, like, them. Rod Roddy and. And, and Shadow Stevens and, uh, you know, other announcers, they were like, you a knew who they were. Run. Joker's Wild, for the bulk of the run, at least the one I remember, was Charlie O'Donnell, who was the announcer for Wheel of Fortune until his death uh, a few years ago before the current guy took over. Mm. But uh, he did a lot of shows, too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just wanted to drop a name, like props for the announcers, because, I mean, they were a big part of the show. Yeah. You know, they, they would introduce the contestants. They would talk about the prizes. So they, yeah. they were very much a big part of the show. You never really got to see them all the time, mm-hmm. except for Rod. You'd see Rod. Yeah. <laughs> His head would pop up. Um, it, now, and, when I mentioned the Snoop Dogg version, or you mentioned it, I actually did say it was a surprisingly faithful remake. Yeah. Part of the reason I can say that is there was a revival of The Joker's Wild in 1990, the same time as that terrible remake of Tic-Tac-Doe came out. Oh, yeah, the, with the, now, the rapping I dragon. Now, <laughs> The Joker's Wild better. But it was only the Joker's Wild in name only. The mm. game was entirely different. Oh, wow. You still had three windows on a slot machine. Just take a name. Instead of categories, they were dollar amounts. Mm. And you get three different dollar amounts, or in the third window, maybe a Joker will show up. And if that's the case, then it just triples what the other two were. And as the host of that version, Pat Finn, would say, The Joker's Wild is a game of definitions. Which, the first time I heard that, I was like, huh? No, it's not. (laughs) Game of definitions. But basically, he would read a word or a phrase, and the contestant would then have to define it, say what it's about. What? And that would go in sequence, where you get one right, he'd ask you another, and another, and another, until you got one wrong. And then your opponent would have a chance to get that one and possibly take control of the board. Mm. Uh, Score amounts were different. Uh, It was played in two rounds, uh, 500, I think, for the first round, and then 2,000 would stop the second round and win the game. I mean, it's not like that game show couldn't be fun, but not under that name. It was a perfectly decent show. Yeah. It just wasn't the joker's yeah. wild call yeah. it something else call it something that else it's taken. not like a terrible idea for a show really i mean it's just not joker's wild you're it stuck was a on different that show centered around a slot machine yeah <laughs> okay so uh, you get snoop dogg's version and while it's not first person to 500 anymore it's a set number of spins in two rounds and whoever's in the lead after that set number of spins wins the basic concept of categories and one question at a time, dollar amounts, it, that, that's all essentially the same. Mm-hmm. It's just been given the kind of Snoop Dogg veneer, so a lot of the questions go to stuff that he's interested in. Yeah, when the there was like, when you say veneer, weed, that kind of stuff, <laughs> getting high. Well, again, 420 <laughs> is one of the dollar amounts on the bonus round. There's no reason for that to be there, except <laughs> Snoop Dogg like <laughs> oh man i'm letting that sink in <laughs> I, you know snoop dogg is perfectly entertaining i actually watched one or two episodes of the martha stewart show that he was on huh? and it, it, it's it was entertaining like he he held his own with the martha stewart it, it was really yeah more I, entertaining I than you diss him. he's not my thing right 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 about his culture right but he, he he gets he's out there he's popular and yeah it brought back a classic show i can hardly complain right well didn't it also like attempt to make a comeback like there's that show like i forget what it's called like impractical joke not impractical jokers but something joker related where there's like three or four guys and they're you know they do challenge each other and it's on true tv and it's it, it's had a long run why can't i think I mean, of whose line is it anyway 
No, 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 no. Um, oh, what was it called? Man, I don't know, but I, I believe that since the show was like had Jokers in the title, they had attempted to do like a Jokers wild themed, you know, show. And I, I don't Nothing. know if it. I'm sorry. Yeah, it may have just been a pilot, and it didn't work out, and it never got to air. But yeah. I, I remember reading about that somewhere. But you guys, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, like, no. Oh, I don't know any other shows with Joker in the title quite well. Well, right. Well, Mark, you you have you like you said you don't have cable, so like True TV is a cable. But I mean, I didn't know like Nick maybe caught it. It's and, been and running for like the, eight years. There are blind spots to me, especially if they were cable specific. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and and if they were done like in the '90s or later, I had cable when I was living with my mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Interesting. Um, let's see what else. What else about Joker's Wild can we say? Um, I don't know. I got nothing else. I think Mark just covered it perfectly well. <laughs> Mark, you got anything else you want to say about Joker's Wild? Not really. No, I think it covered the important stuff. Cool. All right. Well, I guess that brings us back around to Nick. Uh, okay. Uh, so my number four and it, <laughs> another one that I don't even I feel really like know. Nick has to defend his choice every time he gets up. I don't, I don't really even know why I watched this. I think I just watched Spike TV a lot at the time it was on. But when Ben Stein's money. Hello, I'm Ben Stein. And today I'm going to make history. I'm putting up $5,000 that says I know more than you. So if you're smart enough, fast enough, and if you've got the guts, you can win Ben Stein's money. Oh, and and I just I like to choose different ones. Was that Spike know? or was it Comedy Central? I think that was Comedy Central. Oh, it, yeah, I think you're right. I yeah, think it was it's Comedy a great, well, I watch both. I, it's a great show. I it's a Comedy really good Central show. Too. Uh, no, no, that's a good one. You don't have to defend that one. But well, but the thing is, though, I don't know how much Mark can help me with that, and I don't know I if can't. it's in the magic book. <laughs> well, I remember, I remember he kept a safe. I think that like but, there was like the grand prize was in a safe you know, I or think, something. Yeah, well, you just, yeah. You, well, you had to know I, I more than was, Ben Stein. That was like the object of the. Yeah, of the I think show. it was interesting though, smart. just because really yeah, smart. Ben Stein very is like smart. very very smart, but he's just like so like dry. Oh, he, just, oh but he oh, has oh, a. Oh, most boring voice is what I called him for years and years after he was on the Wonder Years as one of the teachers. It, it was, he was the dry he, eyes guy, right? I mean, yeah, and, and also on uh, on uh, Bueller from Ferris Bueller. Bueller. Yeah, yeah that's Bueller. where I, that's kind of how I know him. Let me ask you something honestly. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I make you randy? Wow. Right. Yeah. And, and he would just play that up too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he found he found a, a very particular niche and would like just got everything out of that. I mean, yeah, totally. You know, and and there was a uh, I forget in in the first episode there was a game market maybe it was a couple games that you were talking about that they had like the soundproof booth and, and they oh, did sure. this in Ben Stein's money. Time. Yeah, they did this uh-huh. also. Like they at the end, I remember that they would put. So would Ben go on the booth? Well, or? that's what I was trying to remember. I, I don't remember. I think it was Ben. Because you had to answer because, it more than he did, right? Yeah, because you had to outdo Ben. And so mm. I think that he would go in the soundproof booth, mm. and, and he would like do something like, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of vaguely remember that, too. Yeah, so, cool. it, yeah, I don't. I only remember bits and pieces, but it was just, it was kind of fun to watch, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, it, it fit well on Comedy Central because they, they they it's like they knew what they were going for and they nailed it and it lasted for a while because everyone was on board with what they were going for. Yeah. So it was like a real it was like a new take on a classic game show. And uh, now you know, what I can tell you because you were talking about the need to talk about announcers uh, and I think he may have even served a bit as co-host. I see that Kimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. Yes, the, Jimmy Kimmel uh, was money. the announcer, and, and he was the one that would come out and like ask the questions when Ben Stein would be in the That's that right. Booth. You're absolutely good pull, yeah, Mark. Yeah, good pull, man. Yeah, I remember that too. That was like in between the Man Show and the Kimmy, the Jimmy Kimmel, uh, when he you know first hit, when he really hit it big, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah, I forget that like Jimmy Kimmel kind of had that career going on Comedy Central. He and Adam Carolla. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that's a good pull, Mark. Good call, and he made it funny too because they had a really good chemistry with one another. They kind of picked at each other a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. like you know, like, like Jimmy Kimmel's and, and clearly like. Jimmy Kimmel likes game shows. I mean, he's done stuff on his night show now that mm. you know mocks 
uh, does little mock-up games of game shows from time to time. Oh yeah, and I remember like Ben Stein would always like you know the beginning of it, or uh, I I assume it was the beginning. I don't know, but when my money, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was like his money. Apparently, it was the yeah. was the gimmick. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Win Ben Stein's money. Yeah, when my. I don't know money. if that was true necessarily, but. You know, whether if he lost, he didn't get paid for the show. I mean, what was what were the stakes, really? Yeah, I, I didn't honestly don't know. It didn't matter. I mean, I don't know if we if we did or didn't. But I mean, like sometimes like they'll they'll dramatize, you know, like a show like you you never really know what's going on in yeah. the background. Yeah. And you, you'd like to think that everybody's playing on the up and up, but they, they probably didn't make him pay his own money. If he <laughs> lost. Who would do that? He's a really smart guy, though. Cool. Um, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to add to that, unfortunately. Yeah. Sorry. I did watch it. I enjoyed it. Um, but I, do, do you guys remember when that aired? I don't know. Like, uh, well, I the picked 90s. up that it was starting in the 90s. But I oh, was it how... back in the 90s? I, I would say for sure the 90s. Somewhere. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. I think it went into the 2000s. Okay. What I can... That seems Please. legit. I, I feel like I remember watching that maybe the in the later late 90s, 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. I mean, the later 90s. But... Cool. No, that's a good that's a good pick, Nick. I, I do I do appreciate your little obscure ones that you, you that you share with us. Um, all right, I guess we'll move on to my fourth um, pick, which I really liked game shows that would allow me to replicate the um, show easily at home, and this certainly fits that description. Uh, win, lose, or draw. Welcome to the quick draw game that everyone can play. It's win, lose, or draw. Come on in and join our host, Bert Convy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, the classic uh, Burt Reynolds uh, show. <laughs> I know that he uh, was Bert, like an executive producer. Yeah, Burt and Burt Production. And there were a couple of different hosts there was i think vicky lawrence was a host at one yeah, point I but i yeah, liked bert yeah. i think it was bert convoy or convy or something like convy. that convy okay and i think he was a producer too on the show but he's the, the one bert. i he was the one i remember the most and i think sally struthers like hosted it too like towards the end it uh, mentions it on the site i don't remember her doing it though me neither me neither but yeah i i, I remember the show well like it would start they'd have like little caricatures of the celebrities they would kind of introduce them on oh, the yeah, easel, they, the they paper. Flip it yeah. Over. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was like a team of, uh, I believe it was two or three celebrities and, you know, like your day to day, your, like your regular Joe contestant. And uh, it, it, it just, you know, it was like late 80s, so it was like all your classic, mostly TV stars. And at that time, Burt Reynolds was, it was interesting because he was such a big movie star in the 70s and 80s. Once he started getting a bit older, he was. You know, I guess he was just trying to find ways to stay relevant. And I don't know if he had any other productions other than Win, Lose, or Draw, but it was like his show. I like, don't know. Even the set was supposedly was designed to be like his living room. It's very living room like, yes. Mm hmm. It is. It's all, they're on couches, they're laid back. And it kind of reminds me of like every, you know, version of charades you've ever watched like in a movie you know like a couple couches and families like playing the game mm -hmm. i think i think of like dumb and dumber you know like when lloyd's fantasizing about like the uh what it would be like to meet that girl and be married to her or whatever yeah. like i just picture that fireplace <laughs> uh, but yeah so they would stand up there and uh, they would draw out their um whatever it is they were supposed to get their team to guess mm -hmm. and uh if i remember correctly like the first part was a bit more challenging, like it would be something a bit longer, but then if you won, there was like this kind of a speed round kind of deal where you, the, I think the clues were a bit easier. And Mark, you can jump in if you can remember that a bit better. Well, there was the bit about about trying to get a, a seven phrases, simpler words or mm. phrases in 90 seconds for the bonus round. Yeah. But, I mean, it was great because they had good chemistry. Like, they would usually have Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise. Like, they were a big, they were a really good team. We talked about game shows would always tap the entertainment industry mm -hmm. for hope, for guests. And it was a very, a very successful formula. And, it, I, you know, they still do it today. But uh, Win, Lose, or Draw is always something I would remember playing with, like, my friends. You know, all you needed really was, like, a pad of paper. Like, I never had, like, a giant easel with the big white paper. <laughs> that would have been amazing. But, that uh, would work. 
But another a board game that I remember like loving just because of win loser draw was like Pictionary. You know, like that. Oh, sure. That's like a that's classic board game. It's essentially the same thing. You know, you'd have a certain amount of time to draw something and get your teammates to guess. It's such a simple concept, and it was. It, it, and, you know, like similarly to Hollywood Squares, they were just encouraged to cut up and make fun. And, oh, yes. uh, you know, it, it, it was just a very, like, funny show to watch. I don't know. I, it, it probably could come back in someone's mind, too. But even if it doesn't, it's got some clear spiritual successors in things like Hollywood na- Game Night and Celebrity Name Game that themselves clearly are patterned after being set in someone's living room oh well i think disney channel had like a teen version of win laser draw ah yes hosted oh, by yeah. mark price better known as skippy from family ties oh <laughs> nice yeah um so the, i remember i don't remember exactly how long that went but it, it lived on a bit longer on disney channel and uh but yeah you're right i mean like that's something that could if, if they're not in a living room that looks like burt reynolds burt reynolds living room for sure they could get uh, some sort of drawing show with some b c level celebrities to guess like it, it could come back, but that show I think ran to ninety, and then again a couple more years on the Disney Channel as like teen version. Yeah, I remember that watching. Apparently, that. I didn't know about this, but apparently the Disney Channel did do a new kids version as recently as two thousand fourteen. Oh wow, yeah. I missed that. I yeah, I had never seen it either, but it's in this list. So okay, so it's it's a formula that they have tried to bring back, and I guess it just didn't work out so well. I don't know. I guess Not people just context at least. Mm-hmm. And and you know, like Nick, as a person who likes to draw, I mean, how much would you have like? Did you appreciate that kind? Of, I mean, it's not like you could draw well doing the show. Like, you're not going to appreciate. But was there ever times that you were watching it and you were just like, why would they draw that? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I ever really felt like that. I mean, I I enjoyed watching the show, but yeah. not like that's supposed to be an elephant. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's a blob with like four sticks sticking out of it. That could be any animal. <laughs> I don't really remember. You never game. felt like superior, like oh, I could dominate this show. No. With my... <laughs> mm-hmm. But it really is like a show that like you're not gonna do well if you sit and try to draw intricate drawings. Like you had to be basic. Oh, you gotta be fast. You gotta be fast. You gotta be basic. And uh, like like pyramid, like it was just a fun show to like you you know 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 your you know teammates, know your audience. You could just draw some like simple little thing and just un, you know count on your teammate to know what you're drawing (laughs) like you could draw a quick ninja turtle and i would know what you're drawing or like the first couple lines of a goofy like i know how you draw goofy like i would know like what that's gonna be every single time um but yeah that's that's you know one of my favorite shows looking back it it doesn't even have to be you know the perfect drawing to get the answer maybe maybe it's draw ninja turtle and you know and everybody's always acting like they're scared to go up next to me and and i'm sitting here drawing like you know an actual like head of a ninja turtle or right whatever, and somebody else just draws like a, a turtle, turtle with a little bandana draws, like, a little bandana on right. it like, ninja turtle and they'll beat me you know yes yeah. it it doesn't have to be a good draw you know it's... no not at all and i remember too like you were allowed to um like write down like if you if it was like a phrase like yeah. you were re- allowed like if, to like kind of write got down. a word you could write that word yeah down. you could kind of signal yeah. to them that that was correct and then you could move on to the next word that you were trying to get them to guess to put together the phrase yeah. you know like you know all hands on deck like so they would have to draw like hands and then you know like whatever they would they would have to leave a line and then a couple more lines after to say that hands is a second word so blank, oh hand, right blank, blank. you could do that yeah that's so there there were there were some rules that were acceptable to like you know you could do and it's just like pyramid like you just can't say the word you can draw whatever as long as it's not offensive but <laughs> they would never do that um you know, but yeah, thanks for uh, indulging me on Win, Lose, or Draw. That's one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. And, yeah, okay, cool. Um, Mark, Mark, that pings you around to your final choice. We're at okay. number 13 on our list of 15. I felt like this one had to be Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Because oh, yeah. after Regis was practically <laughs> dead for most of the 90s, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire came on and absolutely reignited yeah. game shows like as something that people were into. Shows, yeah. I was very aware of that, too. Like yeah. it, it was an event, and you're right. Game shows were dead, dead in the water. There were not any. So, 
started in 1999, and it was just essentially a two-week event, but they were on every night yeah. for that week. Prime time, yeah. Uh, which hadn't been done in ages. I, I think it might not be completely unprecedented, but it hadn't been done in forever. ABC yeah. was taking a huge risk, mm-hmm. but it paid off in spades. I mean, it was insanely popular, and... Was that a British show originally? They do it, but they kept the playing it all the time until yeah. they eventually ran ran it into the ground. Right, right. But by the time it ran into the ground, a lot of we'll just say who wants to be a millionaire wannabes had shown up. Mm-hmm. So this was the era of the big million dollar big money game show. I remember and the so weakest link when that came here, out. As a result, who wants to be a millionaire? And, yeah. and what, what was the one like with the suitcases? The oh, with, no. with, with Howie Mandel? Yeah, yeah. Deal or no deal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, who wants to be a millionaire is a great show. I, the thing I remember most about who wants to be a millionaire is it was very difficult to win the million. And oh sure. When when the guy, it was such a baller move what he did. The guy who the first I think contestant who won it, Car- and you, you, he didn't need his actual call a friend, but he called his dad just to let him know that he was about to be a millionaire. I like to call my parents right now. Sure. Use my lifeline. Call my parents. What are their names? Oh, uh, um, my father. I'll talk to my father. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yeah. Hi, Regis Philbin here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hi. We've got uh, your son John uh, with us right now. He's doing pretty well. Good. He's won a half million dollars. Wow. And he's going for a million dollars. (laughs) And he needs your help to get there. John, you've got 30 seconds. Starts right now. Uh, Hi, Dad. Hi. I don't really need your help, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to win the million (laughs) dollars. Yeah, exactly Dude. that. I don't actually need your help. I'm just calling to tell you that I am going to win the million dollars because the correct answer is blank final answer. Drop the microphone. I, just in the series. I mean, I that was. Seen that. That's cool. Oh, you've never no, seen no, that? No, no. It was incredible. It was incredible. It was a great moment. That's yeah, cool. it, it, in in the in the annals of of a game show moments, like that's got to be in the top five of like you know like. <laughs> the making whoopee stuff. Like when I think game shows, I think of that dude. I, I can't remember his name, unfortunately, but he he was amazing. Do you mean the contestant who was the contestant? Him yeah, John John Carpenter. Oh, it was the John Carpenter. Carpenter. Really, John Carpenter? <laughs> Not the same John Carpenter, everybody from Halloween. Uh, but yeah, that that was great. But I guess Mark, it, since you're so good at you know explaining like how the game worked, I mean, would you mind taking us through the? Sure. Now, it needs to be said, uh, it's still running in syndication. I say that a- ABC ran it into the ground, but that's really only true for the primetime version. The syndicated right. one's been going ever since then, so it's now very long running. Is Regis still host, or is it not someone else? No, no, no. Regis left before it went into syndication. Okay. Meredith Vieira hosted the syndicated version for a long time. Uh, left Was she a from The View? Ago, or... And the show struggled to keep a host ever yeah, since. They've gotcha. had a new one every couple of years. But it is still running. I'll just talk about the first version in terms of the game structure. Yeah. You started with a circle of about 10 people, and they were asked a question that had four items that needed to be ranked in order, like either most to least or alphabetical or something like that. And they had these little consoles in front of them with the buttons so that they would then put those things in the correct mm-hmm. order. Yeah. And whoever did that the fastest called the fastest finger yeah would be the person to come into what's called the hot seat the center of mm-hmm. the auditorium and i i call it an auditorium this was a set unlike any game show set to that date it was, it was aptly was named done, the hot spot man <laughs> it was done in the round so there were people all around oh yeah it was so good was yeah, it, playing, had flare not, too. it had like all those lights oh yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah Previous game show sets had been designed to try to, you know, make a person feel more or less at ease in what's already a stressful situation. Right. So you'd look for a host that's very affable. You'd do music that kind of was a calming influence <laughs> to think through and 
characters, Regis. not who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> hey, 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 how you doing? <laughs> you, like you put the spotlight on the person. The music is very intense. Yeah. And it ramps up more and more as the prizes get to be larger and larger. Yeah. This was intended. There's a heartbeat literally playing like in the background. <laughs> Are you sure? I had a set your final answer. <laughs> Trying to talk people out of it. <laughs> Now, that's a great that's point true about who wants to be a millionaire that's been true in all sorts of games since but was not true for most game shows at the time most game shows up to then were what's called live to tape so although there was certainly editing done to get rid of flubs yeah. mistakes things like that for the most part what you saw on screen is essentially how long it took the game to actually be played hmm. or who wants to be a millionaire Contestants, at least at first, did not have a time limit. They could take as long as they wanted to answer a question. Hmm. But if a contestant's taking 15, 20 minutes to answer a question, that's really boring for television. Yeah. yeah. So they would edit out all sorts of dead space. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that. So that was on the air and took an hour to air, took many hours to get that far in the studio. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. But the pay structure, I didn't actually get to this yet. Okay. First five questions tended to be extremely simple questions. Oh, and they were First, multiple choice too, right? Like mm -hmm. four? They're always four, four multiple choice answers. Right. So you'd have the first five questions that were starting out just at $100, and they would more or less double with each one, with the fifth one being worth 1000 Yeah, the first one would be like... You get that right, $1,000 is your first safe level no matter what happens, you will not leave with less than that. Right, right, right. Just little checkpoints, However, basically. If you ever miss a question, you lose everything down to whatever safe level you got. Yeah. I wonder if anyone ever there missed are the first question. Then <laughs> that you could have at any point, but you only get the three. And these changed a little bit over the years, but the ones that were there at the beginning, which are probably the iconic ones. Yeah are 50-50, mm -hmm. which would remove two wrong answers and leave one wrong answer and the correct answer. Yeah. This is not random. They look like it's supposed to be random, and oh. you'll hear some people tell you that it's random, but it's not random. They leave the be best wrong answer in the opinion of the writers and the correct answer. <laughs> I, I never even, you know what, Mark? I never even assumed one way or another. I just didn't even think about that. Hmm. For... The second lifeline, it was called Ask the Audience. No, the audience Everybody poll, Everybody yeah. in that stadium had a little device in front of them that when this lifeline was invoked, they would hit what they thought the correct answer was. Yeah, and you then cool. see that in a bar chart, which showed the all four answers, how many people said them, with you know a, a spike showing up if a lot yeah. of people... Get yeah, it was like a team. bar chart, right. Now, the contestant could either agree with the audience or still go against them. They didn't yeah. tend to commit him. Or her. Yeah, but sometimes it was very obvious, like, times. many people have said it would be, but there were times where, like, it would be, like, there would be one, it was, like, 30% and 30%, like, 15 and 15 or whatever, you know? Like, it was sometimes Typically pretty close. speaking, Ask the Audience was a useful lifeline for the earlier questions, yeah. but less useful in the later ones, because those are harder and more people right. don't know. Right. The final lifeline of the originals was called Phone a Friend, and that's the one you've already talked about, yeah. where the contestant could call anybody in the U.S. They had to provide a short list. I think it might be three or five people in advance, mm -hmm. so that when the contestant then would name who they wanted to call, producers would get that person on the phone. Uh, it was also co-sponsored by AT&T for a time. Yeah, these and were your really knowledgeable friends seconds. you would tap. Yeah. <laughs> I always felt like they'd have that 30 seconds for the phone. <laughs> <laughs> they'd have 30 seconds for the contestants to ask the question and to give the answers and get a response. Yeah. If the 30 seconds ran out, the phone call was cut off and so you just didn't get any help. Oh, so you really did have to watch that clock. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a shame if like it kicked into voicemail or something. It's like going to prison. Like you get one call, buddy. That's it. Make it a good one. Now, here, here's something that what did show up during the course of the show that was probably not intentional, but it wasn't technically a rules violation. If your phone a friend had Google in front of them Ooh, or something similar. Good point. Good point. Google was around so at this time. Could, yeah. So. They could type out the keywords within that 30 second time frame yeah. and say, okay, Google tells me that the answer is X. 
That would have been perfectly legal. However, because it was not really what the producers wanted, and people were starting to get the hint as it went on longer, yeah. that was eliminated by other li- and replaced with other lifelines. Well, game. Google's algorithms have gotten so smart too. Like, I mean, like you know, you, you can just begin to type in a question, and it'll have all the answers right there for you. So, yeah, I, that's interesting. Yeah, that's like one so, of those like we were talking about uh, pressure luck. Like, it's not illegal. You know, you can no, totally exploit right. it. And if you figure out how to game the system and it's still within the rules, they have to give you the money. Yeah. And then they decide to change the rules. <laughs> well, they so can anyway, do that. Uh, it's their back, show. <laughs> back to the, payout, the second safe level after the next five questions, the total 10 questions, would be 32000 Again, originally. It's changed a few times in the years since. Mm. Then after that, it is, again, more or less double for each successive question. So the 11th is 64, the 12th is 125000 13th is 250,000, 14th is 500,000, until you get to question number 15, Mm -hmm. the million dollar question. Oh, yeah. Now, again, your safe level at that point, 32,000. So if you've already won 250,000 by answering question number 13, and you're going to try to take a gamble Mm -hmm. on guessing question 14, you're risking over two hundred thousand dollars if you yeah. get it wrong. It's that staple of game shows where you always have that option of of, of walking away. Yeah, I would be like, nope. I'm oh, not. I would totally. Yeah, I, you know, if and if you got to that point, you were doing really well. Like, not a lot of people even got that far. It didn't seem like. And, and, and one of the nice things that about Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that was not always true, you got to see the question, and decide. Okay, I don't know this. There's no way I'm going to know this. I'm walking away with the money I've got. Oh, that is nice. I don't it, remember it being like that. A lot it. of shows would make you take that risk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most would. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. Uh, do there you have were any lifelines that would nullify that option? So there was at one point in the game where there was a lifeline called Double Dip, which basically said, "Okay, you can go ahead and try twice, and if you miss it the first time, you'll get another chance." But mm. if you invoke that lifeline, you do not get to walk away. Mm. Yeah, I would just stick to the classic rules. I mean, that, that'd that be the most fun for me. Yeah, you're talking about the, the first question always being the easiest. It was always something <laughs> like, what comic strip cat hates Mondays? <laughs> A, Snoopy? <laughs> B, Scooby-Doo? C, yeah. Garfield, yeah, or D, you know, like whatever else. Yeah, it was always the like most brain dead, and that's like I said to Nick, I'm like, I wonder if anyone ever got the first one wrong. Surely someone did. It did happen. (sighs) All right, Brian, we begin with one hundred dollars. According to the nursery rhyme, what did a little Jack Horner pull from a pie? Ribbon, plum, blackbird, little Jill Horner. Well, Regis, I was kind of afraid of nursery rhymes as early questions here, but uh, I think I know this one. Um, I'm going to say... C, Blackbird. My gosh, it was a plum. Brian, I'm sorry. Anyway, Brian, it was a plum. (laughs) But I'll tell you, I I wish I had them handy. Uh, There was a time... This is, of course, now more than a decade ago. Yeah. Where I was keeping a running list of hilarious D answers to the first question. Hmm. Because those D responses in that simple question were often completely off the wall hilarious. <laughs> it would be that nice. Was the stupidest one. <laughs> it would be funny to see a database of all those. <laughs> D was never the correct answer. Yeah. For the first one. Pretty much, no. Again, and it was obvious. That was just like the writers having some fun. It wasn't even a plausible wrong answer. It was a joke. Right, right. Um, I mean, I'm willing to bet that most people like listening to this podcast have seen Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I mean, it's is it the most recent of all of our shows? I believe it is. Uh, It might be of the ones we've talked about. Um, There, I mean, in terms of recent beginning at least some of the ones we've mentioned oh yeah there's one that we haven't talked about yet that's just gone on and on and on forever (laughs) certainly there are shows that uh, may have been revived more recently mark do you remember another show the time when who wants to be a millionaire started help me out if you can here sir um there was a show back in the 80s that reminds me of who wants to be a millionaire and the grand prize was a million dollars and i i remember what was it 
very common for such shows to be like that. True, true. But uh, to me, like, it was just... There weren't any other shows quite like it. And I want to say it was in the mid '80s, and it, it did have "Million" in the title. Okay. Um, but that unfortunately is I cannot remember any of the other details of them. I had a well, board game. Vo- I had a board game version of it and loved the show. I don't know necessarily what you're thinking of. Mm, in the mid '80s, there was a show that was called "The Million Dollar Chance of a Lifetime." That's it. That's that was it. not at all similar to this show. No, no, it wasn't. Yeah, no, it, it, it did, wasn't the did, same did, show, did, but I remember it, enjoying it. It was a word it. game, but used letters and puzzles and stuff. Yeah, million dollar chance. Oh, that's right. Was it Was it in a pyramid or something? Was well, it? it had a giant keyboard that hmm. was perhaps vaguely pyramidal in shape. Yeah, I remember, I remember those little tiles with the words in the board game version. So thanks. I'm going to have to look that up on oh, my yeah. own. That was, a, that was a fun one. That it I, lasted for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, a that, flash that, in the pan, and, you know, play. It, it came out, it was hot. I remember being on, like, you know, was it, it was, like, primetime, though, right? Didn't it come out, like... It was It was general in primetime. It was yeah. syndicated, but it usually aired in the 7 to 8 slot. Yeah, okay, cool. One of those half hours. Anyway, uh, in terms of gameplay, though, uh, the $64,000 question, which was a staple way, way back in the 50s, yeah. uh, did a very similar format where each question was worth double the one before it. Yeah, uh, but sixty four thousand was where it capped out at the time, which was a lot of money back then, and still is again. Well, yeah, right? if you're talking fifties, sixties, or whatever, then sure. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't think it would quite translate to a million in modern dollars, but nah. still a huge amount for sure. Um, cool. Any, anybody else got any uh, thing? Any memories of uh, you? You got to go find that clip on. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Oh uh, yeah, I did. Uh, John Carpenter. Look it up. Yeah, yeah. Look up the name and cross reference it to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. In fact, if 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 you're watching this on YouTube, I promise you, I'm going to edit that clip in. (laughs) Go for it. Yeah, I'm going to put that in. I don't even have to look it up. I just need to watch the show. Yeah, just watch it. (laughs) All right. So, shall we move on to our next uh, game show? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Nick, you're up, buddy. Okay, so my last pick. So uh, number five for me, number fourteen overall, I guess. and, and so this one was actually on Spike TV. You know, I mistakenly said that. I know where you're going. With <laughs> but and I, and I had to ask you guys too. Right, you are Nick. <laughs> right, you are Ron. <laughs> if uh, if this would even really be considered a game show, and you all um, thankfully agreed. Yeah. But uh, MXC. What are these people running from? They're not. They're running to the world's toughest game show in town. Today's competition will pit America's stoic butcher industry workers against wacky cartoon voiceover artists. Get fired up for Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. And now, here's Kenny Blankenship and Vic Romano. Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. That show that is so hilarious. funny. It is but, so funny. I mean, and you know, and I forgot about it. It's it's funny though because that show it, it's it's almost like the real life version of like the cartoon Laugh Olympics. <laughs> Remember that? Oh yeah, that's good. That's a good analogy. Because really, it was it was a Japanese, and I'm not sure when it originally aired in Japan, but it was an old Japanese game show. The um, if memory serves, it was called Takashi's Castle, mm. and uh-huh. and so Spike TV took footage from that and just dubbed in just whatever <laughs> they just whatever it it, it it obviously wasn't like what they were really saying and whatever if you and, are a fan of shows like mystery science theater 3000 or um well that's the best example i can come up with where you know you just take things that are intended to be well that's not intended to be serious but they can always punch it up and make it really funny yeah you know? and they, like, <laughs> they, they dubbed in like these announcers um Kenny Blankenship and Vic Romano, I think. But yeah, and it was always like, right you are, kid. <laughs> and here's Rob Tussin. He was very impressive in the warm ups. And- ah! oh! oh, God, he's still going. Oh, how can he? Oh, he must be feeling really stupid. I don't think he's feeling anything from the neck down, Ken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said Ken. I don't know how many times. There was other. There were many variations of Ken in the name. Like, so right, you hilarious. are Ken? Indeed, indeed, Ken. You know, <laughs> they, were, they were great. They were really funny. Mark probably has never seen this show. I, I have to admit, I never have. Uh, maybe you guys can help me out, though. 
have you ever seen Wipeout on ABC? Yeah, oh. it's like Wipeout. You know, Wipeout probably saw this and was like, we could do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, when Nick brought up the uh, show, I... I started jumbling other shows in my head too like american Nin- the ninja warrior contest yeah and i mean that's similar too it's just very much more serious though. way more serious yeah and they don't dub voices over yeah. it or anything but it, it's like similar contests like you know i, I loved them because like they would they would be so weird you know they, they would have a giant well, I hill laugh olympics. Well, olympics is great <laughs> all right Nick, let, let's try to each remember a couple of the events well, I, like there was one I know that there there would be like they would have to run across like the, uh, there would be like this you know river or something I, for lack of a better yeah term. it was like a riverbed that, yeah and there would be like these rocks that you would have to like run across these rocks to get to the other side but some of the rocks would give way like yeah. if you uh-huh. stepped on them and, and you you had to go through it quickly I think you know there had to have been like some kind of rule like you couldn't just you kinda, had to get a head start you know, yeah like test them and, and remember this, with with every head start like not with every but there would be a lot of times where they would kind of like do like this and I don't know what they were really oh, saying and, in Japanese but they would dub the funniest like yeah, and weird like, there, there would be like the uh, like this other guy I forget what his name was like like his character name but he'd every time like somebody would be ready to go he'd be like well let's get it on <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that guy was he the Frenchy guy like the French no uh, he was, uh, Captain Tennille <laughs> was, was his name and like the, the Frenchy guy was like Guy Ledouche <laughs> Uh, we've had reports that one of our prisoners is missing, but don't worry, Guy is on orange alert and nothing will get by me, Guy. Hmm? Hey, baby doll. <laughs> oh, Guy likes. Guy Ledoux, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> there was that, and I also, too, like the contestants themselves, like they would raise their hand and then they would say something silly like, I ain't afraid of no ghost, and then they yeah. would run. <laughs> it would it's just completely out of nowhere. Right, right, right. Call me for a good time, you know, like, and they would just run <laughs> off and do their thing. Like, it was just, they would they, just dub in nonsense. Whatever was the first thing that came to their mind, they would just say, and then they would go full bore. And like you said, they yeah. would have the most incredible wipeouts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like they, since it was dubbed, they'd kind of put in, they would insert really horrific sounding like crashes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that one. I also remember one too, where there was like a, a, a like a, like a, like a, not a staircase, but like an incline kind of hill. It was a hill he would run up, but it was real narrow. Oh, the boulders? Yeah, they would drop these boulders down on Like him. big, fake, like, paper mache boulders. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, Kenny. And this is Jay Cerveka. He heads up, and he, oh, looks like he hesitates. He looks confused. I'm thinking trouble here, Vic. Oh, I'm thinking hip replacement, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, right. I know they're not dropping real boulders, but they seem to have a little heft to them, too. Because when they would land on them, like, you could see, like, their neck cave in. I'm like, they were kind of hitting them hard. Yeah, but uh, I I really enjoyed that one because you could run up a bit and there were like these little safety slots or whatever. Mm. But they would have people like pushing them out, like they yeah, would run yeah. up to it and they would try to get to a safe spot and let the boulder. But they would always shove them yeah, out so immediately. Shove you into it. <laughs> so I'm like every time, every single time, what would end up happening is they would just start running in the opposite direction. <laughs> and there's like the like the the balls, the boulders that were already stopped. They would get crunched in between like <laughs> every single time. I don't know if I ever saw anybody make it to the top. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's a great show. And it is so funny. <laughs> lots of those episodes are on YouTube. You, you can just type in MXC. Uh, and that that's why I kind of really wondered if it could even really be considered a game show. Because obviously, now, like maybe when it first aired Takashi's Castle, maybe there was like people that would win. But, you know, I mean, it was yeah, just did all they, just did, for fun on this. It was always like, too, like it was like the chefs versus the... Yeah, they, they you know? would come up with like some kind of group name. But that... but were they keeping score? Like I don't even know. And I don't think they gave away prizes, or at least they didn't show it. Yeah, Maybe the I, original I, game show that, they well, did. And that, that's why I kind of like compared it to Laugh Olympics because I think they did just kind of say like the chefs won, you know, or yeah. whatever. And that's a great pull, Nick. Uh, Mark, you you really should check it out. It's you. Well, I do see already. I've got a list of five full episodes that I can grab. So it's I'll hilarious. Have... They are so funny. <laughs> it it it's it's a bit juvenile. I'll admit at times, but I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> it, it, it's such a great show. But White Bat's a good pull. Like that's the most probably modern yeah. incarnation, and that was a really it, popular. The way you described it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, but and in Wipeout too, like they're often like on platforms above water, and you know, like this, everything's wet. You know, they're just always slipping off of things. Yeah. You know, and they, and you always hated 
well, I mean, you kind of liked it, but they would just, their body would bend in these like really horrible like <laughs> positions where they would just get crunched and they'd slip and their head would hit. The, they wore helmets. And they would be like oh, cartoon, yeah. like sound effects. And they're well you know? padded. <laughs> yeah, they're very well padded. Even the obstacles were padded, but I mean, it still had to sting a little bit. Oh, and like one of them would have like, you, they they would be, I think they would maybe, it, it would be like football. And they would like dress them up with all you know all the football gear and whatever, but there would be like sumo wrestlers yeah. like on the field. Like all the, all the other people would have like these big sumo outfits. Right, and they'd have to, right. Like, run through and try to get to the other side, and they would like just bounce off of the sumo Those wrestlers. Were fun. Oh, remember the doors? Like there would you'd have to run full like yeah. speed ahead. Yeah, and there, there would be, be like a... three doors you could choose from. Right, and... but one one would collapse easily. The other two were like supported. You know, so yeah. you would just ran into the door. Yeah, and you just had to pick one and just run for it and you'd either like just like break through like the paper or whatever and or or you just like hit a wall and fall down <laughs> i enjoyed it so much too because like the uh the, the contestants would oftentimes be wearing those like like you know dress clothes like they look like businessmen out there they got like the buttoned up white shirt and the little yeah. skinny ties and they're just out there running full speed ahead and ramming into it yeah it'd be like the dentist versus you know whatever right yeah so that's a good sh- i have i have good memories of that show and yeah i'm pretty sure that was a spike thing <laughs> right you are ron <laughs> right you are nick <laughs> indeed <laughs> okay uh anything else we can say about that i don't know that's it's just good fun it, it is it's good fun along in the same vein of double dare you know it's just yeah it's just silly good fun all right well that brings us to our last uh pick i'm gonna end this uh the 15th uh game show is one that has lasted a long time uh it's still going today and it's not the price is right <laughs> yeah. or, ta- or the wheel of fortune or wheel of fortune or jeopardy no uh, i'm talking about the family feud let's meet the mckenzie family Ken, Carolyn, Colin, Karen, and Mona, ready for action. Playing again, the John Carlo family. Juretta, Patty, Marcus, Shireen, and Beth. On your mark. Let's start the family feud. With the star of family feud, Ray Cole. Thank you very much. And I, I, I love that it's it's been around for a long time. I, if it has had lulls, I don't know for how long or where they were. But I mean, the I, longest gap was between the end of the Ray Combs Dawson version in '95 and when mm-hmm. Louis Anderson started in '99. So only about four years. Remember when uh, Al was? Otherwise, it's been pretty movie? continuous. So there, there was a gap between Dawson and Combs' first run, but it was. Oh, you talking about Richard long. Karn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like. Richard Dawson is, I guess, the most iconic host. The you know the one you see, the most. Now, now was it Richard Dawson's run? The one where they would, um, they don't do it anymore, I don't think. But they used to introduce the families, and they oh, would kind of like pose, like yeah, in a, well, yeah. yeah, they're like in these. Dawson uh, and Co- both did that. They okay, I, I really enjoyed that. I they like were, that too. They were, what do you call those like little boxes? Like where you, uh, gosh, mm, can't. Well, think. they were little stage settings, but they were like intended to look like a family no, picture no or portrait. Box. Oh, like a, a dia, what do you call it? Uh, diorama? diorama. Diorama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Di- they were like human dioramas, and yeah, they would reveal the name, and then that uh, that iconic like you know hayseed kind of like fiddle music or whatever. Yeah. That I, I don't know if they still use it. Um, I, I have nothing against Steve Harvey. I do think he plays up the sexual aspect yeah. a bit no, too much. I mean, Steve Harvey. Now that's just him, of course. The hosts before him tended to do that, probably at the request of the producers. Oh yeah. Uh, it, it, but, don't you yeah. really mean something dirty? Like I just feel like he would egg him on. I, I got to be honest, that, and then react like I can't believe you said that. You know, it's like come on. I got to be honest. I mean, it's it's funny, but it disappoints me <laughs> that the show has gone there, and, and that's just all it is now. Name something a man might have in his pants when he's going on a hot date. <laughs> Boner. <laughs> TV? You can say that on TV? Yeah. Well, that's just well, that's it is. Thing is it's not that Dawson and Combs even never had that. They did. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. It, uh, it really does monopolize the show now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot... I, okay, 
I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to let you guys go first. Uh, Mark, who is your favorite host all time on Family Feud? Oh, my. Um, Ooh, put I him love, on the spot. <laughs> that, that's fine. I don't dislike Dawson, but Dawson has several flaws that make it hard for me to just go right for him. Most of the others I would rank probably about the same, except I really disliked Louis Anderson. Fair enough. But other than that, I, I, I think all of the hosts have tended to be pretty good. Yeah, I know what you mean about um, Dawson. He he had his things that he did. It was It was a time when... You know, it was more acceptable to do sort of insensitive things. Like you could get away with it. Yeah. You could never well, get away. You co- totally could get away with it. He totally did. Yeah. The thing that uh, my wife is constantly amazed at when she sees Richard Dawson and reruns, because I do watch them quite a lot, is everyone really did seem to love Richard Dawson. Yeah. Uh, when he was on Match Game before he was on Family Feud, mm-hmm. he was the celebrity they always picked oh that's right he was a he was a celebrity uh panelist on that show a lot yeah contestants on family feud would come bringing gifts regularly Mm -hmm. for richard dawson he was extremely popular whatever his faults were however creepy you might think it is that he kissed all the women yeah they a lot of times on the lips very strange i mean i won't say that every woman on the show was okay with that i don't mean that but many of them were it was a different time, and you know I don't want to get too far deep into this, but he wasn't the only one. I mean, there were other game show hosts who would get away with saying things like "honey" and "oh," without question. Yeah. And now, you get any of else that's going to regularly kiss every single woman on the show, not like even Richard close. Dawson did, no, no. but yeah, totally. That there's all sorts of uh, groan-inducing, insensitive <laughs> things that people just weren't held to account for saying right. in a way they would be now. Yeah, like it was, if you were going to describe someone, it wasn't intelligence. Like it was always, you're pretty, you're very pretty. You know, so it is. It was a little cringeworthy, but but Dawson was very popular. I enjoyed him. He was funny. Uh, oh, he, absolutely. He brought so much to that show. Uh, there did. would be no Family Feud now if it weren't for how, you know, that show was. Well, you... honestly, there'd be no Family Feud then if it wasn't for him. Okay, good Family point. Family Feud is actually a spinoff of Match Game created to give Richard Dawson a vehicle. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. Was he? Wasn't he English? Isn't he a dual? But was a dual citizen? He's since passed. Technically, yes. But he's I from mean, England. I, Did he, you know that? You really can't mm-hmm. tell most of the time. He doesn't actually use his English accent all no. that much on Family Feud or Match Game. But there are times you can tell. Um, Nick, who would be your favorite host? I'd have to say Dawson, uh, just because that's the one that I grew up with and yeah. watched the most. And he, and even to this day, he's still the one who's served the longest. He did 10 straight years for when the show was originally on the air. He came back after Ray Combs was done for his few years. Mm. So uh, but 11 years, that's longer than anyone else has hosted the show, including Steve Harvey. I thought it was interesting seeing Al on the show. <laughs> but uh, There have been a number of hosts. That. I've forgotten how many different hosts there were. Oh, quite a lot. Um, you and know, I'm going to say uh, Ray Combs. I know he's. I, I kind of enjoyed him the most. I, he I've, was only if, there for seven my years. first instinct was to say Richard Dawson, and I love Richard Dawson. But Ray Combs was the host when I was watching it yeah. the, in the eighties, and uh, he he was a very kind of vanilla, like you know Pat Sajaki kind of host, blow dried, so feathered funny. hair. I mean, he was like you know consummate eighties game show host, mm-hmm. and he was he was entertaining. He was, and he kind of I I remember him as being a bit beloved. Yeah, when, I, yeah I remember he, him he was too. great. It's such a tragic story, though. I don't know if you guys know. Um, But basically, after Mark Goodson died, his son Jonathan took over the production responsibilities on Family Feud. He was concerned that ratings were starting to dip again. And so he essentially fired Ray Combs and brought back Richard Dawson in an attempt to boost ratings. It didn't work. It only lasted one more year and it was gone again. Yeah. Uh, Ray Combs didn't take it terribly well. Uh, he, on camera, made a few cracks that made it pretty obvious that he was hurt by the decision. And the story is that he just walked right off the set without talking to anybody when the taping stopped. Mm. He did do another show uh, for a little bit of time after that, but he really never got over it. And he ultimately committed suicide. Mm. Very sad. I, I did know that. 
Uh, and I remember when that when that happened, there there were a lot of really sad people because I mean he seemed oh, like a really was, genuinely good guy. Yeah, he was really decent. I mean, I, I won't say without his faults, he was an era right. a product of his time as well. But generally, meant well, decent guy, yeah. a lot of fun. Well, I didn't know him personally, that's for sure. But um, but yeah, Ray Combs. I, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give Ray Combs the nod on my favorite. Just just. Barely. Yeah, I mean, I, I do remember him. I With like much him. respect to Richard Dawson, even though, like, he, you know, there was a, it was a product of his time, and he, he took advantage of it more than a lot of others. But, you know, there's no disputing how he's the face of Family Feud, really, you know. True. Uh, now, I said that L- Louis Anderson I didn't care for, but what I will say there, his, his version started in 99. Mm-hmm. And it's run continuously ever since. Okay, yeah, he was the one that it's brought it back. Been- air since louis anderson started louis anderson's funny now i have memories of liking louis anderson back in the 80s i guess i thought he was funny and like but then i think about it further i only enjoyed him in the the smallest of doses yeah i i could take him in small doses and one thing i will give him credit for i loved his sign off at the end of every episode when he was hosting he would sign off saying be good to your family and that just really worked for this show even though no one had ever done it before or since Mm. Mm-hmm. Can appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but then there was a John O'Hurley era. Do you remember this? Well, mm-hmm. let, let me go, go ahead with these in order. Okay. Richard okay. Karn was immediately after Louis Anderson. You remember him as Al Borland from Home Improvement. <laughs> yeah. John O'Hurley followed him, and was really successful. Uh, yeah. Had a pretty solid four years. Uh, but again, ratings were starting to drop. They decided to do something new. They brought Steve Harvey on, and. Whatever you might say about Steve Harvey, he absolutely rejuvenated the franchise. He so can work an audience. Solid, I mean, solid set of years ever since 2010. He's doing the nighttime versions as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. He just <laughs> got to give him his. It's uh, his. Perspective. I guess it's his stand-up comic background I like, where I he, like the faces he makes. Like when yeah, somebody does they, like a crazy. They, <laughs> you know, they'll go to him into these like sexual responses, and he, yeah, he always has that like what i can't believe you said that you know like that's 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 the he's formula good, he's totally expecting it yeah he yeah. wants it uh but you know he he knows how to work an audience maybe is good or it, probably the best since you know dawson well, of working an audience i've been to a taping of steve harvey's oh uh, okay uh, give us did, the inside uh, baseball mark here i saw a taping of family feud which in many ways was a surprise uh because i've been to tapings of other shows most notably the price is right before mm. and price is right is as i described for you earlier live to tape family feud is not there is a ton of stuff in a family feud taping that never makes it on the air mm. he, he he ad libs just chats with the contestants yeah really tries to play up the humor mm-hmm. and some of it you know they just cut for time and other times, and I, I get the impression that Steve Harvey kind of knows, you know, because he's done this a lot of years now, yeah. when it, he, it's getting to be, okay, they're never going to include this anyway, so he'll just start letting loose on the profanity. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. And uh, you know they're never going to air that. Yeah. Um, There's also, uh, basically, if he starts approaching the audience directly, that's also a cue that okay, this is stuff he wants to <laughs> either talk to or berate the audience about, and that's never going to make it to the episode. Right. And the thing I really, really disliked about Steve Harvey as host, frequently, because the audience was not applauding or cheering enough. Hmm. And we're told, essentially, uh, you know, every answer, doesn't matter how bad it is, you're supposed to say good answer. I refuse. Ah, bad answer. Ah, <laughs> you bad boy. Be called out for such. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> you're getting this for free. People pay me to come to come see me at stand-up. You're getting this for free, so at least you can do is start cheering and applauding. Yeah. No respect for that at all. Mm. If you want to get me to applaud, fine, but I do not respond well to those tactics. Oh, right. well, that, I, I, I can appreciate that for sure. That Good for you, Mark. <laughs> He's a man of principles. Of <laughs> he, um, you, you may be aware that uh, Steve Harvey is a religious person, and towards the end of the taping, he gives his 
his uh, evangelistic story, if you will. Mm. He starts to start the sermon. And it just <laughs> brings everything to a crashing halt. Okay. Now, I, I don't need to belabor the point. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, I am a religious person myself, so it's not the fact that he's religious that's the problem. Yeah. But... Again, I do not respond well to that kind of evangelism. I think it's absolutely uncalled for, and yeah. this is not the place for it. Yeah. yeah. I will never go see Steve Harvey again at a taping. The the, uh, the recent news where he was kind of uh, berating his, his own staff, you know, where he, you know, like, he would say things like, I need so much time, like, don't come up to me and talk to me, because, you know. I, I, I saw some of that. I, I, that turned me off. A little bit. I mean, I can appreciate that he wants a little bit of free time, I guess. But I mean, you're also well, like you're right you're in there, this. It's, it's really hard to, for me to tell sometimes when he's really being serious and upset and berating, mm. and when he really is just trying to do it as a form of humor. Yeah. Right. It's not necessarily a form of humor I appreciate, but yeah, not me to neither. The extent that he isn't intentionally belittling a person but is simply playing it up that mm. is different this wasn't playing it up because he was upset that someone leaked it so th right. this was not intended to be taken as a joke i don't think but you know yeah. that that's that i mean that's just stuff that got like any job has riffs i like tips behind the scenes it's and people shouldn't be known only for their worst moments no of course not now let, we we kind of just skin by this because I assume that everybody that's watching this or listening to this has seen the Family Feud, but uh, let's let's just kind of go over it, I guess, a tad. It, it's it's another one of those like shows where they survey the audience yeah. door to door, like Nick mentioned. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah that, this was the show I was yes. thinking of. Like I always like just in my mind picture like they're they kind of clipboard and they're yeah. like ringing doorbells and. I, obviously, they don't do it that way, but that's that's how I envision. Like, I don't know. I'm not even sure if it even requires explaining. I mean, <laughs> it, it's just I, I want to bring attention to the the final round, the bonus that's round is one. Yeah, that that is one of the best of all time. I love that lay that format yeah. where someone comes out, gives the answer, and then you know the team has to come out and try to get the rest of the money. And but of course, all of the best answers are in theory been taken, so they have they're forced to assuming come up with the first person got them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, assuming the first person got them, and you know that it's it's a really intense format. I, is it sixty seconds that they get total? No, no, we're close. You get oh. twenty seconds. Oh, oh, gosh, yeah, okay. So each gets twenty seconds, and you have to get to is it a hundred? Well, the second person two hundred seconds four, so it's fifteen and then twenty. Okay, yeah, but. It it's just a really fun show, and it's gone on for a long time. It it may be the most well known of our, of our list, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so like as I'd mentioned at the top of the previous show, and if you're listening to this uh, without listening to the previous show, I recommend you go watch that because we do have a little caveat at the beginning. We're not ranking these. If you know, if you happen to catch this and we didn't mention like shows like Price is Right, we're gonna get there. <laughs> we're Price gonna talk right about could that. Be like its own show. It really I mean, could. We could be like, what are our favorite like little mini games on the Price is Right, and just talk about that the whole time. Oh my time. gosh, that that show went for has gone for so long. It's gone for even longer than I even knew. Uh, like it did not start with Bob Barker. So yeah, um, that's, that's right. Originally, uh, there was a show with Bill Cullen that had essentially the a, a series of what you get with the item up for bids the the one bids at the front of the show uh they didn't do the carnival games and oh, such okay. version uh so when bob barker came on in 72 it was after that other very successful run but it was the new price is right for several <laughs> years because yeah. it was in many ways an updated version the carnival games are great and bob barker pound for like for my money is the greatest game show host Ever. And I love the little skinny microphones. We never mentioned that either. Oh, yeah. Like that's like one of those hallmarks of game shows. A staple of the old game shows. <laughs> the skinny microphone oh, that Bob man. used all the way through. And, and brought to you by you know, whatever. Yeah, sponsor here. <laughs> Turtle game Wax. <laughs> the same way. It's really weird. I, I have many, many uh choices. Oftentimes when like Nick and I'll do a show, we'll we'll do a ten. And uh since we never really talk about doing future shows we kind of feel obligated to put shows in or games in or have you. And, and obviously I, we have mentioned a few besides the ones we actually listed. Sure, we have. 
Uh, but we'll we'll definitely go into depth when those shows come around. But I, I for sure want to revisit this topic again, and uh, we'll we're not going to feel like you know obligated to put in a show because it's a great show. I wanted us to be to have that freedom to talk about shows that maybe we wouldn't talk about if yeah, we were feeling really beholden to put in shows like Wheel of Fortune and yeah. Price is Right. So we're we're going to get around to a lot of those big shows. Mark, and you've so, already you know, they're great. I feel like we've already got you on board for the next episode, whenever that is. I'm happy to do it. It's always a matter of scheduling. But of yeah, course. Like, I appreciate you uh, taking the time, because we are on completely different time zones. So it is it is tricky. Um, Nick being like so close as we are, and you being where you are. Um, but, you know, I, I don't really have anything additional to add to Family Feud. I, I, I wanted to talk about the hosts, the differences in the hosts. I wanted us to each maybe get a, an opportunity to talk about who our favorite was. And I don't think we need to get into the minutia of some of the, I like what Mark would get into shows, maybe like Blockers, for example. Like, it's fun to to get you know an idea of how the show worked, but we don't need to do that for Family Feud. Yeah. Everybody's oh, no, everybody seen Family Feud help. many, many times. Uh, and I guess with that and that caveat out of the way, uh, I feel like it's a good time to go ahead and bring the show to a close. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We talked fifteen of our favorite game shows. Uh, just you know. It's, it was a pretty uh, diverse, eclectic group of shows. Uh, and uh, Mark, you, you being available to give us a lot of the history was just great. I oh, always, I always love having you on the show, so thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, but I, we'll go ahead and wrap this um, two-part episode up right now. Um, thanks for tuning in. Oh, uh, we're on Spotify now, guys, by the way. If you're Ooh. an audio listener, uh, you can find us, uh, as always, on iTunes, uh, you could always find us on Stitcher, but now you can find us on Spotify, so I got us on there. And uh, obviously, too, if you, you may be watching this on YouTube, check us out on the YouTube. You know, the YouTube slash BitGeeks, we're there. And uh, Mark, do you want to, like, say where? how can people follow you, like, on Twitter? Well, I, the best place to try to find me is on my blog, first and foremost. That is Black Rocks Toy Box. I do have a Twitter account. Uh, you find me there under GB Black Rock. Uh, do a search and shouldn't have too much trouble finding me. Yeah, you guys should follow Mark because he. I really enjoy what you've been doing about uh, like a Throwback Thursday. Like you'll you'll kind of like recirculate some of your old stories that you've written on the on the blog. I've been doing Transformers stuff for long enough now mm -hmm. that a few months back i realized that i'd been doing them at least once a week uh, that was the plan at least back then i'm not quite that frequent now yeah uh, but i'm doing a new transformers post at least every week so it's really been really easy to say okay well this is the one that was 10 years ago today yeah or 10 years ago this week uh, and just have that show up and the, because the throwback thursday is a thing it just made a natural fit of course so uh, you know you guys check that out uh, it, it's a great, it's a great blog. I feel like you're missing an opportunity. Oh, yeah. I feel like, I feel like you should do something like this episode of the Bit Geek Podcast is brought to you by <laughs> Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts. <laughs> do it right now, man. Do it right. <laughs> Take us out. <laughs> you're also welcome to look me up at Black Rocks Toy Box on Facebook too. Okay. Black Rocks Toy Box on Facebook. Oh, and we're also uh, Bit Geek is is also uh, available on Facebook. Oh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, man. <laughs> With special consideration <laughs> by the Bit Geeks on Facebook. Yeah. I need a list. <laughs> yeah, you do need a list. Oh, uh, yeah, that that's pretty good, man. You're right. Thanks for getting that in. Uh, I, I don't know if we've really needed to post anything recently on the Facebook page, as far as pictures go. Like, oh uh, yeah, that, I haven't really had a, a much need to lately. Yeah, uh, but we we do try to. Um, maybe this time I can post some pictures of some toasters or something. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon <laughs> that that should that should be like the uh the thumbnail for the video like the dragon <laughs> well for this whammies <laughs> oh i don't know it's gonna be hard that, that one's gonna be i take pride in my thumbnails i don't know what i'm gonna do for this one with 15 shows you know i don't know how i'm gonna i'm gonna just try to pick maybe one uh but anyways uh that's the end of the show i've been your host ron avis and i'm nick wright and I'm Mark Baker, right? And we'll see you next week. See ya. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>